Right, so, um, bit of an informal video this, but this is how to import a motorbike into the UK. Um, it's very similar to cars, but the questions are a bit different. So it's import have vehicle to the UK, but this is gonna cover just motorbikes. So, as I have literally just finished, I've got some notes up on my screen here. As I have just finished the import process and I have my V5 now, and while the information is still fresh in my head, I thought I'd make a little quick guide on how to do it. So step one, purchase your motorbike and get it into the UK. Once it arrives in the UK and you have it, I guess in your possession or it's in the UK, then you have 14 days, whatever, to tell HMRC that you want to import or apply for the NOVA. Uh, NOVA is the notification of vehicle arrivals. Um, you could drive it into the UK, couldn't you? Because you could come in through a port. So if you're importing from like Germany or France, then you could drive it in. And then it's just when you decide that I'm actually going to import it. Um, so for imp if you're driving from France or whatever, you have what, three months or so before you actually have to import the vehicle? Anyway, uh, or if you drove it from, you could drive it, you could buy a motorbike in Germany, and then import it to uh, Ireland, couldn't you? There, uh, Southern Ireland. There's someone who did that recently. I might put a link below in the description. Anyway, carrying on. Once you, This is for the UK, not for Ireland, though. So, at this time, you'll be asked to pay. Once you apply for your Nova, at this time, you'll be asked to pay the VAT or the import duty or whatever. And that is the total cost of the bike and the shipping costs. So, whatever it costs you to bring it to the UK is what you need to pay. And it's a percentage. And I cannot give you that percentage because it depends on the bike it depends on where you got it from it depends if it's historical it depends on all sorts of things it depends on the percentages but so for example if you bought the bike for 500 and it costs you 500 quid to get it to the uk so you're looking at a thousand pounds whatever percentage it is it's a thousand pounds i can't give you that percentage the only way you can really find out what it is is to actually call the hmrc up the queue isn't that long either. Um, well, for me it wasn't. Um, and they can tell you over the phone what the percentage will be. Step three. The Nova has been acquired, so now you need the dating certificate. Uh, this can be obtained from the company that made the vehicle. So in my case it was Honda. Or some owners clubs do it as well, but you, you have to ask around um, what's best for you. So for me, I use Honda Europe. I emailed them my frame number and engine number and also a few photos of the bike to prove I had it and to prove it was a solid bike and everything. Um, and from that information, they found the information for me. Then once they had told me, okay, we found the information, now you pay the fee of £35. So I paid them £35 and then a week or so later, I received an email telling me what my bike was, they emailed me back saying the bike is a 1981 Honda CT. Um, in some small places they would be unable to give you one, for instance if you gave them the frame numbers and everything but then the pictures you gave didn't line up to what they had or the frame numbers you couldn't make them out, they might be more reluctant to give it to you. Um, that's the only cases like if they would refuse it I guess uh, or in some rare cases they couldn't find any information on the database. Anyway, you get emailed, I got emailed um, the copy of the dating certificate. However, DVLA do not accept an email, they do not accept a printout. It needs to be an original on letterhead paper with an actual signature at the bottom where you can flip the paper up and you can see the little indentation that the pen made when the signature was made so or signature was done. So it, it has to be on letterheaded paper. And due to the coughing lockdowns that we were in, this process took me a lot longer because everyone in Europe was working from home. But eventually I got my official document. And if you're doing the process then you should get it hopefully a lot quicker than what I did. Um, step four. Once you have your dating certificate you now know officially what the bike is. So now I know that my bike is a 1981 Honda CT. Now I can insure the bike. You can insure the bike with your insurance providing they allow it, sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't like motorbike policies, there's limits, etc, etc. Can be a bit of pain, but you do need insurance. And you can insure it on the frame numbers. And then we'll come back to that later with the insurance. But yeah, you need to insure it with the frame numbers. 
Okay, step five, MOTs. Do you need an MOT? Well, everyone kind of knows the law. Oh, if the vehicle's 40 years old, you don't need an MOT or to pay the vehicle tax. Well, for instance, well, my bike is September 1981, so it clearly means that it's 40 years old. No, because the full line of that law, the full legal term of that law is any vehicle registered up to and including on the 7th of January uh, 1980 would be classed historical, but because mine is after, so it's on the 8th of January, oh, it's September, then it cannot be registered historical classic until the next financial year, which of course is April the 1st. So I waited the extra month so I could avoid having to take my bike for an MOT and avoid having to pay the first vehicle tax. Well, that saves me around £51. £30 for an MOT and 20 odd quid, or £21 I think at the time of recording for the vehicle tax. So you have to book the bike in for an MOT. If you need an MOT, uh, put it in the back of a van, take it to an MOT tester place. Uh, there are, I've read reports of people riding them down there. I don't really recommend that because I'm not sure legally what you need. Inconsiderate at all, people. Right, once you've got your MOT, now it's on to the next step, which is step six, which is the V55 form. Oof, I think they're having a joke with that. 69 questions. I ain't joking, it's 69. Anyway, but you do not have to answer all of them for motorbikes. Anyway, the language is a little bit odd. Uh, I'm going to give you some of the highlighted questions. Just, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of why the V55 form can be a little bit confusing, but it does cover everything from buses, trucks, motorbikes, cars, all that sort of thing, it's all on one form. So a lot of the questions are a bit odd. I mean, so for instance, how much standing room does your vehicle have? Well, you can obviously skip that question by just leaving it blank. And you still might want to have the .gov website open so you can quickly just refer to extra things just in case you're not in quite sure as well. Uh, I'm not going to explain all of these answers, I'm just going to tell you which questions you would need to answer to import a motorbike. Um, and it's a bit weird, so like I say, for example, I guess step, uh, question 18, uh, for instance, the questions are a bit long-winded and a bit weird, but so question 18 is number of seats. So numbering seats, including the driver's seat, take this information from your certificate of, conform certificate of conformity, or alternatively, you can count the number of seats in the vehicle yourself. Um, so for a motorbike, it's one. Anyway, uh, a lot of the questions... Uh, you get questions like um, you do not need to put this or if you do not have this information you do not need to put it but if you have it please put it down so obviously you do not have to answer these questions so obviously I just left them blank uh, so here's the questions that I answered to get my bike imported and uh, yeah of course you might have to change some of them uh, accordingly so uh, question two yeah you skip question one question two uh, tax, well I put exempt because my vehicle is over 40 years old. Uh, three is uh, to do with how long you want to be tax, uh, the vehicle tax on, on the road for, 12 months. Uh, registration fees, £55. Uh, six, well it's make, so Honda for me. Seven is model, so CT110. Nine, two wheel, uh, that's how you write it. Two, number two, then wheel. Um, Ten is colour, so for me it was red. Eleven, reasoning, exempt. Uh, 18 is 1, uh, that's to do with seats, 19, 6, 27 is the year of manufacture, 30, question 30, dates from when you want to start the tax, so the first of the month, um, 31 is, uh, oh it's petrol, um, 32 is the VIN, write down the VIN number, 33 is write down the engine number, 34, cylinder size, that's what it says on the engine, so my bikes are 110 but the cylinder size is like 107. Um, and like all 125cc bikes are actually 124ccs. Um, 45, power in kilowatts. Power slash weight in kilowatt. You just have to Google that. Uh, 57, first four digits of your postcode. Uh, 63, the name and address of the person who w would like the V5 to be registered in because you could be filling this out on behalf of someone. You could be a motor trader filling out on behalf of someone else. Uh, so that's the V5 of the person who's going to be the registered uh, keeper of the bike. Um, 64. Uh, information, uh, type, you know, all your information, personal information, your address, your email, your phone number, all that stuff. They want that in there. They never contacted me via the phone or via email. They did it all through letters. But they want it anyway. 
uh, exempt reason. Uh, so yeah, reason for exempt. My bike's 40 years old. That's what I put. Um, 66 is miles on the speedo. So that's in miles, not kilometers. So kilometers divided by 1.6. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and then of course, all you do is sign date on the bottom. And that's all you need to answer. That's all the questions out of the 69 you need to answer. Uh, that's all you need to answer. Do you know how long I was stuck on question 62? Question 62 is list price. You must provide the list price of the M1 type of vehicle, uh, M1 type approved vehicles only. This will be the price of the day before the date from which the vehicle was originally registered. Yes, that is actually the question on the V55 form. Um, I was googling up what an M1 type vehicle is and that is to do with like trucks and stuff like that. So obviously not motorbikes. Hey, I have my V55. That's the questions I answered on the V55, and I have my V5, and it's all registered. Right. So step seven: sending all that stuff to the DVLA. Send it all to the DVLA, Swansea SA 991B BE, whatever. Check check the address, please, before you send it. Um, and yes, they only accept checks. Yes, you actually have to write a check, and that was a new experience for me because I've never wrote a check out or written a check out in my entire life. <laughs> so, I guess first time for everything. Anyway, so I did. Fifty-five pound is the tax is the uh, fee that you have to pay, but but if you need to pay for road tax, uh, vehicle tax, sorry, then you will need road tax doesn't exist. It's vehicle tax. Uh, before anyone calls me out on that, it is vehicle tax. Anyway, so you must pay for the tax. Make sure you send the correct amount, and every year tax goes up. So if you're applying around April, then hold off. Maybe wait till April passes so the new prices are out, or get them in January or something like that. Anyway, if you're applying for around April, you could be rejected because the amount, if you send it off and the tax went up in the time that they got the letter, received it and processed it, they will send it all back to you saying, this is the incorrect amount, please write a new check. Really annoying but it happened a lot during the coffin lockdowns we had in the UK. Um, so write a check out for the correct amount. They do not take cash, write a check out. Uh, I put a photocopy of my driving license in there, photos of the bike with the frame numbers, what I thought were clearly visible, etc. cetera. Um, MOT uh, paperwork if needed, the original dating certificate, uh, um, the Nova, and the v and the V55 form that we just filled out and everything like that, of course. Anyway, a good idea to make copies of everything before you actually send it to DVLA, just in case it get lost in the post or something silly like that. Um, I stuck it in an envelope, stuck a first class stamp on it, and psh, away it went. And if you're lucky, that might be the end of it. That could be the end of it, and that's where most guides say that's the end of it. But in some rare cases, and of course it happened to me, everything happens to me, it's not always going to happen, but you might get the bonus round, and I got the bonus round, which is DVLA sent me a letter saying, please arrange an appointment for an inspector, uh, an inspection of the vehicle. And when I first read it, I was like, what do you mean I have to get the vehicle inspected? Um, it's a company, I can't remember the name of the company off the top of my head, but they send you the letter if they want you to do it. Um, so there I was, got the, the got this letter, this lovely brown letter from the DVLA thinking, that's it, my vehicle's ready to go, this is the V55, you know, the V5, and they want to arrange for an inspection. So, an inspector had to come round. Now, I called the number, we arranged a time and a date for the inspector to come, you know, it's going to be one of them between 8 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon on this particular day, or 9 and 3 I think it was, on this particular day the inspector's going to call. Uh, he gives you a call probably about an hour before he shown up, or he said it would be around 11 o'clock for me anyway, so that was good. Um, he came up, and he just want, they just want to inspect the bike. Now, um, it needs to be a complete bike. It does not need to be running. He didn't want to see it running, but it, he wanted to see an almost complete bike, basically. Um, he was happy with the state he saw it in, which was pretty much done, it was. Pretty much done. And all they want to do is they want to check the engine numbers, they want to check the frame numbers, uh, they want to make sure that it's mostly there. Um, the guy will take a bunch of pictures of it. Um, the frame number wasn't legible enough 
for DVLA, so we had to like scrap it all, scrape it all down, and everything to make it more legible for them to see it. He took the pictures. He said, "This is good," and of course, this happened just all before the bank holiday weekend and all that stuff. So I had to wait a little bit extra longer, but he's, you know, was happy with that. Anyway, that after he, the inspection and everything, he sent all that off to DVLA, and it took ten working days for him to get the information, well, from the DVLA back to me, whatever. Once I got the V5, I was straight down to the shops, got my plate made up. As the plate's being made up, I'm on the phone to the insurance company, letting them know, I've got my reg, here's my reg, and it's update the insurance so I can ride the bike, because I'm itching to ride the bike now, and I just want to ride the bike, and I want to ride the bike, and I want to ride the bike, and it's been so long to get it imported. Anyway, it's a long, lengthy process, but it's kind of worth doing if you want to import a bike that was never made in your country, like my Honda CT, it was never for my country. It's a bit of a pain to do it, but now it's done, it's done. Anyway, hope this video, hope you, hope you find this video interesting. This whole process is a bit frustrating. I'm not very clever, I can't read very good, but I still got my V5. Yeah. So, um, like, comment, whatever. And if you're interested in more videos, I guess watch motorbike videos. If you've got a car, doesn't really, sort of applies but you have to answer different questions. Anyway, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, goodbye.